Don't get stuck living on the sidelines because of your chronic conditions. Let me share a way that I made it through my last pain flare. Hey warriors, I'm Jennifer of the Chronically Unstoppable Crew, inspiring you to stand tall and be chronically unstoppable despite your chronic conditions. So let's get started on how to deal with that pain flare like a freaking rock star. For the best advice on how to live a chronically unstoppable life, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell to be notified when I post a new video each Tuesday. Let's talk about living with chronic pain for a minute. But first, why should you listen to a girl that you see doing yoga on beaches, hiking, and going on adventures? Because I, too, am a chronic pain warrior, chronic illness warrior. So, hi, Spoonie! I do not spend all my days on this wonderful, splendid island doing all the things that the pain-free individuals are doing, but I do have my days, and nowadays, there are more of those days where I feel splendid than I don't. But I do slip back into that pain monster and just want to crawl under a rock, but I've found ways to manage it so that I'm not always wanting to crawl under a rock and live on the sidelines. Let me tell you the story of my last flare. Recently, I lightly bumped my elbow on the wall. And by lightly, I mean it was so light, it didn't even make a noise. This might not be a big deal to those of you who don't have shoulder injuries, but to me, oh my goodness, it's life or death. For a moment, it took over my world, my thoughts, my entire being. Just picture this. I'm walking down the hall, and out of nowhere, this stupid wall decides to jump out in front of me and bump my elbow that jabs into my shoulder. It's total jerk move on the wall's part. Then all of a sudden, this feeling like someone has poured a bucket of hot coals on my shoulder, then shoved a sword through the socket, comes over me. Needless to say, it took my breath away. So much fo so much so that I didn't even let out my favorite curse words. And let me tell you, letting out your favorite curse words during a pain flare is so good for you. Just make sure the kitties aren't around. Or come up with some kid-friendly terms. So now I am laying on the floor, not breathing. My shoulder is being stabbed and set on fire. Tears rolling down my face and wondering why that dumb wall had to be there in the first place. I hear what sounds like a freaking elephant coming down the hallway rushing towards me. Let's face it, when pain is amped up, so is your sensitivity to sound. And in walks my husband, asking if he can help. I take a big enough breath to say, don't touch me, and he backs away. Now I've managed to injure myself and hurt my husband's feelings all at the same time. I guess that Wall and I now have something in common. We're both freaking jerks. I lie there on the floor what seems like forever, drowning in my tears, wishing I could just be knocked out. Finally, I roll to my other side that feels semi-good at this point and pick myself up. I put my arm in my jacket pocket because it needs a little support. Thank goodness it was there and it was cold enough to be wearing a jacket in the summer and dialed the doctor's office. I am sure that I have created some sort of injury or messed something up really bad. They immediately get me in for an urgent visit. So I show up at the office, smiling at the front desk lady, managing to make a little small chalk, being annoyed that she wants to talk about her freaking children, and all I want is to stop being in pain. The nurse takes me through to the back, and I get her to laugh at some joke I suddenly remember because, again, I use humor to get through the pain a lot of the times. These actions made my pain almost bearable for a split second, right up until the doctor came in to give me their allotted seven minutes that they're allowed to have with their patients. She abruptly moves my shoulder to see if it was something that I could do or if she could feel something moving and check my range of motion tears pour from my face. It is horrible. At this point, I'm drowning in my tears, my humor has left the building, and I'm doing everything in my power to not pass out or throw up. Because now we're pushing the 10 scale. Now we're just, you know, if there was something more than 10, we may be there. She asks me a few more questions, and I mutter some sort of response. Her diagnosis? It's all in your head. Here's the prescription. A referral to PT, and I think it would be good to 
go and talk to someone about your feelings. OMG! Really? Did she really just say it's all in my head and I need to go see the psych department? <gasps> I can't believe someone told me this again. I picked my ego up off the floor, put it back in my pockets, tried to pull myself up above everything that I wanted to do, and this ever so growing level of tears coming out of my face. How could this be? How could this all be in my head? How is this not an acute injury? How is this possible? I poured myself into the car, hoping it to have just a good, ugly cry and get over it. But then I realized I had no more tears to give to this angry shoulder. It was time to make a decision. Do I wallow in this self-pity or do I pick myself up and deal with the dang mystery of all this is in my head, this pain is in my head. I took the no pity party approach. For this time, I should have listened to my own advice. It would have taken me less time to move past this if I would have followed the rules and the power of two. I could have avoided pushing myself this hard to exhaustion and rushing myself down the hall where I bumped the elbow. If you haven't checked out the power of two video on managing your energy and pain levels, I suggest you do. Do as I say, not as I do. Back to the doctor's office visit. Does this story sound familiar? It's sad how our healthcare system and conventional medicine treat people with chronic illness and chronic pain. I am a true believer that it's because they're not educated in the subject, not because they just don't care. And they're giving such a short freaking window to actually see you and figure out what's going on, that how can they really diagnose something that's a chronic condition that's not just gonna show up on a blood panel? This is why if you have a chronic illness and you're always out there looking for answers, and you're going to doctors for the answers, and the doctors just aren't giving them to you. I've been to tons of classes, I've done tons of research, I've done Western, Eastern, functional medicine, and I've come to a point where I've created a toolkit where I can go on this healing journey and make it past these stupid walls that jump out in front of me. There are a few things that you want to remember when you are walking with chronic pain on your journey of life. It may not go away, but you can live well with these chronic pain and chronic conditions even if there are flare-ups on occasion. Things to remember when you are dealing with pain and these jerk stupid walls that seem to jump out in front of you. One, all pain is real. Remember that what you're feeling is real. And most conventional doctors get little to no actual chronic pain training. So they don't know how to properly communicate with you. Two, pain is learned and you can have an overactive warning system. The good news is that there are some amazing ways to retrain your warning system to be less sensitive. Three, again, I am gonna say this again so that it sinks in. Your pain is real. I know what you're thinking, but your doctor told you it was all in your head. They're flipping wrong. Although pain comes from a message that's interpreted by your brain, it's not your imagination. Something in your nervous system is off and sending you the wrong message. Meaning, again, your pain is real. Four, you don't have to get stuck in that annoying roundabout. You know the one I'm talking about. Every town has one and no one knows how to get out the stupid thing of negative thinking or distorted thinking patterns. If I learned anything from all the pain management classes I had at Kaiser, IIN, and doing all my own research, it's that you can get stuck going in circles over and over and over again, living as your pain, not with your pain. But you can make a choice to make a decision to pack a bag of tools, pick an exit, and get the hell out of that damn circle already. I remember that pain day all too well. After all, it was only a few weeks ago. And well, I'm still rehabbing that stupid injury from that dang wall that jumped out in front of me. The last thing I have to say is I haven't let my shoulder stop me from living a life I love. If it wasn't this pain, it could just be another. 
the joys of living with chronic pain. The thing that's different to me is that I have all the tools to have a thriving life, even when it knocks me to my knees. I know you heard me mention a lot about the power of two lately. It's because it really literally does change your life and how you react to your pain. So you can feel less pain, prevent future pain, no freaking jokes. But if you haven't watched the video or downloaded the free PDF, you might not know what this useful tool is all about. So here's the freaking deal. Your body has been tricking you into being weaker than you really are. Your body has been sending you pain signals that are way before you really need to know that you're going to be in pain because it wants to keep you safe. But what's really happening is your body is trying to keep you sedentary, not safe. You know what happens when you sit in one position for too long and then it's really hard to stand up and get out of? Well, the power of two helps you not get stuck in those positions for too long. When your body doesn't move enough, it gets stiff, it hurts, and then when you finally try to move, it hurts more. But if you learn to read the warning signals and the signals your body is sending you, you can become really familiar with them and you can make sure to look at which signals to listen to and which ones to ignore so you can push yourself a little bit farther and bring yourself back when you need to bring yourself back so that you don't set yourself up on a good day for 10 bad days to follow. That's the power of two in a nutshell. Learning to recognize the early warning system and knowing where your true limitations exist. Finding that balance point so that you can live a chronically unstoppable life. So if you like this video and you want more tips on how to be chronically unstoppable and how to stand tall with chronic conditions and chronic pain, I'm your girl. Subscribe to the channel and I hope to see you next week. Have an amazing day. Wait, don't have an amazing day. Make today amazing. Go out and be chronically unstoppable. Bye.